of uh, my unit is Wondrous Waves, the study of sound. It was supposed to be a unit on light and sound, but due to weather and circumstances, unforeseen, we've cut it to just sound. And uh, my name is Kendra Stateman. I teach first grade at Southside with Kelly and Sydney and Missy. So I have the faculties in here with me. <laughs> Um, the whole uh, entire unit, of course, had to have some, some sense of purpose. So, uh, of course, you want to start with um, the content, which obviously was sound. And then another goal was for my kids to be able to collaborate, because um, sometimes that's an issue for six-year-olds to do group work. Um, and also, I wanted to integrate different disciplines. And then I wanted them to take the basic concepts that they learn about sound and apply those to some type of culminating activity which you will see um, later in the PowerPoint. Um, these are the standards that I addressed. Um, we planned and conducted different investigations that vibrating materials can make sound and that sound can also make materials um, vibrate. And then we used different tools and materials to design and build a device that uses sound to solve a problem to communicate over distance. And this is how we began our unit. Um, the first thing that my kids needed to know, obviously, was, well, how is sound made? So what we did was um, I just gave them rubber bands, and they got with a buddy, and they struck the band to see that sound actually causes visible vibrations. And you wouldn't believe how amazed they were with just doing that. We also used tuning forks. Um, and the whole purpose of a tuning fork was for them to strike it and realize that sometimes you can't see the vibration, but if you hold it to your ear, then you can, you can still hear the vibration. And then we also used the tuning forks to um, watch how they moved other objects, like rice, oatmeal, different things. And some objects were moved, were more affected by um, the tuning fork than others. And they were pretty amazed with that, too. And these are just some of the different um, things that we did. We, we learned different terms like vibration, pitch, volume, different basic sound, the vocabulary terms. And they had to do a learning web um, of different just thoughts and things that they came up with after we had discussed and did small little investigations with those. And this is actually a sample of the lab report from the tuning fork investigation. Like, did the salt move? Yes. And they had to put a rationale for, for why they thought the salt moved. And then, like, did the water move? Um, and then, like, the rice and the oatmeal. And their favorite was the water because when you struck it and put it down in the water, it made it jump out of the bowl. So yeah. they had to record the observation and then why they thought that what they observed happened. Okay, we then moved on to, once we had learned some basic terminology, they got in groups of three. And they actually made little kazoos out of toilet paper rolls. And um, one person wasn't allowed to have any kind of covering. One person had a tin foil covering, and one person had a wax paper covering on their kazoo. And then they had to take turns humming through them, and they had to rate them on a scale of one, two, or three, which one hummed the best kind of medium hum, and then the, the one that didn't hum at all. And they had to come up with a rationale within their group why this one hummed better than that one, and which one did or did not create any, any vibration at all. So. And then um, we continued on to after basic terminology, learning about all the different um, basic terminology, we went on a sound walk. And so I told them that, you know, not only is it important to know how sound is made, you need to be observant of different sounds. So we went for a sound walk, we recorded indoor sounds, and then they also got to go outside on the campus and record outdoor sounds. So they enjoyed that. And then we took it a step further, and we, all the different sounds that they observed we began to talk, are they natural or are they um, artificial or man-made sounds? So we had different magazines that parents and other teachers um, and people in the community had sent in. And so what they did was they just took a little T-chart and they had to find some examples of natural sounds in the magazines and then um, things that had man-made sounds in the magazines. This was probably next year a culminating project. This was their biggest um, undertaking. We used Chromebooks that we got with the grant monies, and um, they worked collabor collaboratively in small groups on a research project about um, an ocean animal they selected, like a dolphin, a sea lion, or a hermit crab. So what we did was first, um, I put them in groups. I didn't let them choose their groups because I just I had to place them with certain students for certain reasons. So um, I put them in groups, and they got together, and they just read an information article about their particular ocean animal and the way that that animal makes sound. And then they had to move to the next step, which was they had to use their article. Can you go back for me, please? 
they had to use um, their article to answer uh, five or six questions. And then after they did that, it took us about a week and they made a Google slide presentation um, for their ocean animal and then I helped them put in um, a sound clip and also um, a picture clip. And then I presented it to the class. And the next slide, you can go ahead and go to it, is actually um, one of the finished products and I'm hoping that it plays because I know there's been some difficulties mm -hmm. today. So yes. we'll try it and see. <laughs> And this is actually the sea lion group. So. that project, which they were fascinated by being able to do that. They thought they were professional using the smart board and teaching each other, and they actually helped each other out if somebody didn't know a word. So surprisingly enough, they didn't fuss. It actually went rather well. <laughs> we moved on then to, we learned all the vocabulary, natural, man-made, communicating sound, and how to do that over distance. So what better way to introduce it than the old-fashioned make a string telephone. So they got with a buddy and made a string telephone, and then they had to kind of do a, summer, a summary of what they learned about the string telephone, what caused the vibrations, how could they hear in it, just different little things that they observed by talking with their buddy. This was our culminating project. We actually created um, a class orchestra. And what they did was they had to take everything they had learned from the beginning to the end, and they completely on their own had to prototype, design, build, and record observations um, by making a musical instrument. So, go ahead. Um, this is just a collage of different pictures. Um, it took us about three or four days. The first day they had to get with somebody and what they wanted to do, they had to prototype it out. And then they proceeded on to gathering materials like paper towel tubes, juice boxes, just different things that we had. And they had to build it and then they used oodles of stuff, and I do mean oodles of stuff, yeah. um, to, to decorate it. So. And that's just some samples. And then the next few slides, I'll just let them roll. It's just all my kids. Um, I couldn't leave anybody out. So that's just the, um, the instruments they made. And they had to either make um, a string instrument, a percussion instrument, or they could make a shaker instrument. And most of them, of course, wanted to make a string instrument. <clears throat> hmm. Those are good. And then the, after they finished, they actually had a lab report and they had to, that was their very first page. And then they had to go on and list the materials they used and like did it make a loud pitch or a soft pitch about the volume. They had to, every single thing they had learned about sound, they had to complete it in their little, little musical instrument journal. So. And then um, along with my other first grade teachers, we are taking all of your students to the East Kentucky Science Center on um, May the 8th and they will participate in science and engineering activities there. And thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> all four of you uh, because I'm standing here seeing all kinds of informational explanatory writing taking place yes. because that's what you're using and I'm wondering do you use that terminology with your kids? Do you start in kindergarten first grade? Actually um, we use at our school um, a program called um, Right Steps Program uh -huh. and one of the units is informational writing. So I, well, I think that the other first grade teachers did it as well. We kind of pulled back from the unit um, because of the writing unit itself. Uh -huh. That was the unit we were currently on when we started this. And um, we used their writing time every day to do the science, but then they had to use their science and apply it in their writing. So, yeah.